So just what are aflatoxins? Aflatoxins are toxins produced by fungi, certain fungi, not all fungi. Fungi are microorganisms. They occur on a wide variety of food items and are prevalent in countries lying within 40 degrees, the latitudes 40 degrees north and south. All African countries lie within these latitudes. So aflatoxins are a big problem in African countries. Aflatoxins may be found in a wide variety of food items. And many of the food items we consume here in Ghana are contaminated or may be contaminated by the toxins. Aflatoxins impact tremendously on human and animal health. And most importantly, they are well-known liver toxicants. They affect the liver and then can disrupt liver function and which with chronic exposure may lead to liver cancer. Acute exposure to aflatoxins may result in outright death. In Ghana, some of these problems have been reported. Aflatoxins impact on food, because you all know that food that have been contaminated by aflatoxins, or that have been infected by fungi, the aflatoxin con uh, fungi, are not good for consumption. So they will be taken out of the food system. Now, this makes food security a problem. If we take our food from the system, it is a problem. Aflatoxin also impact on the export trade. And I hope there are some people from the Ministry of Trade and Industry here to listen to this. If your food items are contaminated by aflatoxins, you cannot export them. Because many of the places we export our food items to, like the EU countries, have set limits for aflatoxin contamination, above which you cannot export. So Ghana is signed on to the Economic Partnership Agreement. And what this means is that Ghana would have a free access, free quota, free tax, free access to the European Union. Likewise, the EU countries can also export some of their products to Ghana. What can Ghana export to the EU countries? Isn't it agricultural produce? Peanuts, maize, uh, peanut butter, cocoa powder, and what do you have? But these are the items that have been shown to be contaminated by aflatoxin. So what is Ghana really going to benefit by signing on to the EPA? I remember very well when this EPA story broke. And the EPA is not a, a what is it, a environmental protection authority, please. It is economic partnership agreement I'm talking about. Ghana's produce will be rejected. Your peanuts will be rejected. Your cassava chip, if it goes for uh, what is it, the poultry industry or the livestock industry, it will be rejected because it's high in aflatoxins. Meanwhile, they will be exporting their things here. They are not going to bring you agricultural produce. They are going to bring you uh, maybe motor cars, radios, eh? radiograms, telephones, and what do you have? So we ought to be careful as we sign on to this uh, EPA. What about the ECOWAS trade liberalization scheme, ETLS? It's another thing that we are talking about in the ECOWAS subregion. Now, ETLS means that trade within the ECOWAS subregion, the 14 countries of ECOWAS, will be liberalized. Well, now aflatoxin is not, uh, there's no regulatory framework for aflatoxin in the West African nation. So we can do trade easily. But when people become aware, countries become aware, and they start regulating aflatoxin, trade within the ECOWAS subregion under ETLS will also suffer. Because if you're exporting ground out to my country and the aflatoxin levels are very high, I will not allow you to bring it in. So free trade within the West African subregion will also suffer. 
Traditional approaches to managing aflatoxin contamination in maize and groundnut are essentially based on proper post-harvest handling, such as drying to 6 to 8 percent moisture for groundnut and 12 percent moisture for maize. This is not always successful due to unsuitable drying facilities and unreliable post-harvest infrastructure. Since aflatoxin contamination occurs in the field, it is necessary to look for other options that we can use to stop aflatoxin or even to minimize it in the field before we put the crop into storage. One, op one such option which has been tried successfully is the use of atoxygenic strains of aflatox aspergillus flavors in a biocontrol effort. Using such atoxygenic strains, a biocontrol product which we are launching today called Aflasif Ghana 2 has been de developed for Ghana as part of a PhD thesis work by one Dr. Daniel Agbetiame. He's here with us today in collaboration with KNUST, the IITA, and the USDA. This product has been tested widely in Ghana and has been shown to reduce aflatoxin contamination by as much as 76 to 100% in the field. And this year, the product was registered by the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, for use in Ghana. EPA has the following characteristics. It is not a genetically modified product. And I'll come back to this later on in the lecture. It is not GMO. It has low cost to use. It is not toxic, and it is easy to apply in the field. Currently, Aflasif 2 is manufactured in IIT, Ibadan, Nigeria, and must be imported into Ghana. In this uh, presentation, as I said before, I'm required to assign responsibilities for the control of aflatoxins in Ghana. So what I intend to do is to identify some of the key areas of problems in aflatoxin management in Ghana and suggest some organizations, sectors, and individuals who might be responsible for carrying out these actions. The main reason for our meeting here today is to launch this novel product, the use of which will be a key aflatoxin control option in Ghana. Whether or not the product will be successful in Ghana will also depend in part on the publicity we Ghanaians give it. If it is given bad publicity, and it is labeled as GM, in other words, genetically modified product, as some Ghanaians and the press did some years back for political expediency with a plant protection bill. And I hope you know about this bill and the story I'm telling. It will trigger negative reaction from the Ghanaian populace who are quick to label anything as novel as aflasive genetically modified. You will recall that the plant breeders bill received the GM label, whereas it had nothing whatsoever to do with genetical, uh, what is it, the genetically uh, modified organisms. And up to now, the bill has not received the light of the day. It is, I think it's still languishing Parliament. It's gone through the parliamentary procedure, but the president has not given an accent. That's what I, and it's gone back to parliament. That's the last information I had on it. So this is very unfortunate. This is a matter which clearly is not GM. It's not about GM. It's about the plant breeders' rights. It was tagged a GM product. The people were tagging it GM product. Which many of them were doing so for political expediency. Please, let us not do the same with Aflasif. Instead of tearing it down, it should rather be the responsibility of the press. And as a matter of fact, all of us here to promote its use for aflatoxin control. I must say that Aflasif is the only product we have now that will target aflatoxin production at the source, that is, the field. In the short to medium term, 
The private participation in the importation and distribution of the product in Ghana as done for other agricultural inputs such as fertilizers, pesticides and seeds, these are in the private sector domain, will be in order. In the long term, the possibility of the government of Ghana or even the private sector either on its own or in partnership with the government of Ghana to establish an Afla seed factory in Ghana should be explored. This, if done, will be consistent with the government's mantra of one district, one factory. After all, isn't it the establishment of factory in the district? So it falls neatly within that uh, objective. I understand that in Senegal, an Aflasif plant is being put up through a private sector endeavor. The same can be done in Ghana. Mr. Chairman, there's no chairman, but I'll say it. In Ghana, we say that all the time. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> aflatoxin contamination of crop, that is maize and groundnut. Now I'm referring specifically to maize and groundnut, because these are major crops, especially maize, is eating across the length and breadth of Ghana. And why do we always focus on maize? It's because about 90 or so, 100% of Ghanaians consume it. Unlike aflatoxin, is a problem on sorghum and millet, but we don't even talk about it. Because it's probably restricted in the northern parts of the country, and only the people there, only a few people are eating it. But not so with maize. So, aflatoxin contamination of crop maize groundnut is both a pre harvest and a post harvest issue. In the field, the best method for aflatoxin controls would be the use of crop varieties that are resistant to contamination. Unfortunately, I must say, such crop varieties are absent in Ghana. The most common maize cultivar, which is Oba Tampa, and the groundnut cultivars, F mix and Chinese cultivars, are all prone to aflatoxin contamination. Now, this means agriculturists or national agriculturists, especially plant breeders, have the responsibility to come out with new cultivars resistant to aflatoxin contamination. Though the university should not be left out of this, the Crop Research Institute and the Savannah Agricultural Research Institute, both of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, should lead in this effort. These two Ghanaian research institutions have played pioneering roles in developing and releasing maize and groundnut cultivars with good agronomic characters and were resistant to certain crop diseases, which I acknowledge here. However, they are yet to develop any crop variety were resistant to aflatoxin contamination. Ladies and gentlemen, Aflatoxins were discovered in as far back as 1960 in the UK and the first published report of aflatoxin incidents in Ghana was by one Beardwood in 1964. That is four years after this thing was reported in the United Kingdom. So Ghana we had a head start on aflatoxin research. We should congratulate ourselves. 40 years, uh, 44 years on, we do not have any aflatoxin resistant maize and groundnut cultivars in Ghana for use by Ghanaian farmers. What are our plant breeders doing? What are agriculturists doing? 44 years after the thing has been reported, nothing. Plant breeders at the Crop Research Institute and the Savannah Agricultural Research Institute and the universities, as a matter of fact, urge here to double their efforts to remedy this unfortunate situation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is heartwarming uh, to note that recently an aflatoxin resistant groundnut variety was developed by ECRISAT. ECRISAT means International Crop Research Institute for Semi Arab Tropics in India. So, Indian scientists developed a resistant variety. My question is, and this is like two years ago. I said recent, but it's not just uh, two weeks ago. It's about two years ago. 
What prevents Ghanaian plant breeders from forging collaborations with their Ecrisat counterparts to develop similar crop varieties in Ghana? In other words, we are not waiting for some people to bring crop varieties. Our scientists are being urged to develop varieties here in Ghana. Because 44 years after a problem has been discovered, it's too long for us to be waiting, to be waiting for somebody to bring us manna from heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, farmers too have a great responsibility in mitigating aflatoxin contamination by using good agricultural practices. Despite the usefulness of aflatoxin, we will continue to stress good agricultural practices in aflatoxin mitigation. Good agricultural practices and aflatoxin should be used in an integrated manner. Some people think that aflatoxin can be used on its own, neglecting the good agricultural practices. It won't work like that. So we have to use them together. Thus, farmers, some of the good agriculture, farmers should avoid planting in termites infected. They should also avoid late planting and also avoid late harvesting. Because these are among the practices that exacerbate aflatoxin contamination of maize and groundhog crops. Also, once harvested, maize and groundnut should be rapidly shelled and dried down to low moisture content levels. But the question that I want to ask, do the farmers have the infrastructure for such rapid shelling of maize? Do they have the infrastructure or the equipment for rapid drying? So what do they do? They shell by hand. Mm -hmm. And when they harvest about one acre for about uh, two weeks, they are still shelling bit by bit, whilst aflatoxin contamination takes its toll. Ghana has a lot of uh, mechanics who are very competent in designing equipment like that. When I was in the Winnipeg of Education System at uh, one of their colleges, I was principal there we were able to develop a solar dryer. We also developed an equipment that rapidly shelled. These things should be scaled up and brought to the use of farmers. They say aflatoxin is not a big problem in the United States. It is a big problem there. But those guys, they have equipment that will shell maize, hmm? that will shell groundnut, hmm? within a day, even within hours. And they pass it through a machine that will dry it. So before the groundhog even comes out, it's already dry to six, to, between six to eight percent moisture. So would aflatoxin be a problem? Besides, they are also using aflacif. So you see, this is a society where things work. Make the recommendations from research and they are able to uh, adopt that recommendation to mitigate the problem. Not so with my Ghanaian people. Ladies and gentlemen, on a very serious, important issue, a good majority of Ghanaians are unaware of aflatoxins. This is a very big problem. At best, the level of awareness of the subject in Ghana is low. My previous research has indicated so. When we're doing research and questioning people, it came to light that the agricultural extension officers, who should know better, they did not even know. Nurses in the hospitals, who should know better, they didn't know. And when we asked agricultural extension officers, do you have documents on aflatoxin or any book in your office? They didn't have. Have you attended any workshop on aflatoxins in the last five years? No, they have not. These are people who are supposed to pass on information on aflatoxins to farmers. Will our efforts succeed? Definitely not. So, thus, awareness creation is necessary. 
The media should have a great responsibility in this effort. Media men are here, so this is for you. Media men and women themselves ought to be trained on the subject of aflatoxins. And this is where we need the Ghana Journalists Association most. Recently, the Ghana Journalists Association took a strong stand against illegal mining called Galamse in Ghana. I'm urging the association to do similarly in support of effort to mitigate aflatoxin contamination through awareness creation. On this matter, there should not be sensationalization nor politicization of the subject. You should have a clear and fair mind and approach the issue as it should be done so that we'll be able to overcome or bring aflatoxin, the issue of aflatoxin, to a broad section of Ghanaians. The Ghana Education Service should also take up part of the responsibility in awareness creation on aflatoxin. I teach mycology to first year university students in my university. That is the KNUST. Most of them, if not all, have never heard of the, of the word aflatoxin, let alone the fungi which produce them, nor the potential harms they do and can cause. Is it not the GES, GES, that the Ghana Education Service, which is best positioned to include some aspect of food safety and aflatoxins, even if briefly, in the science curricula or syllabi to be taught in the high schools in this country, I may ask. If this is done, it will greatly enhance aflatoxin awareness among the students at a very early stage in life. When the AIDS, HIV AIDS story broke many years ago, it was through awareness creation, even at the secondary school level, hmm, which helped to partly mitigate the problem. We should do similarly with the uh, aflatoxin contamination of crops. Ministry of Food and Agriculture scientists, or not scientists, officers, should not be left out in the creation of awareness on aflatoxins. They are, after all, the frontline staff who interact with farmers and are therefore important stakeholders as far as aflatoxin management efforts through awareness creation in Ghana is concerned. But these guys lack knowledge and they must be taught. Deputy Director, please, when you go, communicate this agency to your minister who you are representing here. You see, it is enough that we say in agriculture we have to increase yield, we have to increase production. Production is different from yield. We have to uh, improve on plant spacing. But what, what do we say about aflatoxin contamination of maize? Recently, there's a government initiative planting for food and jobs. And this essentially is dwelling on maize production. I can uh, tell you that if you may go to the field and sample some of the maize, many of them may be contaminated by aflatoxins. Is that the kind of maize we want to eat? So aflatoxin is a national issue. It's not an issue for IIT or a few scientists, plant breeders. We all have to get involved. The MOFA, Minister of Food and Agriculture, the Directorate of Plant Protection and Regulatory Services, direct of uh, the MOFA, hmm? we are all part of this problem. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to finish, so exercise patience. A robust regulatory and monitoring framework for aflatoxin and its contamination in human and animal foods is not well developed in Ghana. At best, there will be bits and pieces of some documentations in Ghana on the subject. But these are not even, these are mainly advisory and they are not well implemented. Establishing the framework in Ghana 
should be a joint responsibility of the relevant stakeholders, such as the PPRSG of MOFA, the Food and Drugs Authority of Ministry of Health, and the Ghana Standards Authority. The Standard Authority people, they, the onus lies on them to come up with this uh, set standards and uh, the regulatory uh, document. But these other key stakeholders can input. To properly monitor and regulate aflatoxin, Ghana would have to improve her capacity for detecting and monitoring the toxins in food so that only foods that are safe are permitted on the market. Accredited labs for aflatoxin testing is one essential increment for this activity. Ladies and gentlemen, I am of the view that as a nation we will have to put in place an aflatoxin control action plan, which among others will clearly define aflatoxin management options for Ghana. I'm therefore calling for the establishment of a national aflatoxin working committee, whose main responsibility will be to put in place the action plan and see to its implementation. This action plan should be, should to a great extent be modeled after the PACA plan 2014 to 2024. The composition of the National Aflatoxin Working Committee should have representations from the relevant stakeholders, such as the universities, the food, uh, the pharma-based organization, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Ministry of Health, Research Institutes, the Ghana Grains Council, etc., etc., And of course, the Ministry of Trade and Industry. This can be done. After all, hasn't MOA, MOFA established a biosafety committee to, to superintend over genetically modified crops in Ghana? So if this has been done, why can't we have a committee superintending on over aflatoxin contamination of crops? The same could be done for aflatoxins. Once again, Mr. Deputy Director, please bring it to the attention of your minister. Finally, as we go into the panel discussion, let us ponder on some of the issues I have raised. We may add to them, and sensitize, synthesize the ideas on how best we can manage aflatoxin contamination in Ghana.